Everything tearing up, even when we're not in the field using stuff. And here we got all the carnage from wheat harvest. I realize we dodged a huge bullet. Very blessed that this thing did not catch on fire. No, I'm not dealing with this hot water mess. Don't let it get on you. All right, Dylan Joyce, this is how a Ford is supposed to crank and run. As you can tell, it's starting to get pretty dry around here. Corn's still holding on, I really don't know how. Lines, lines, lines. It's gonna take me a month to haul 40,000 bushels. She ready for Carter now. To clean it properly, we'll be washing on this thing a solid day and a half. Just uh, pressure washing and flushing with a water hose, pressure washing some oil, flushing with a water hose just repeatedly until we get uh, all the grain, all the dirt out, and she is squeaky clean like new. Three and a half minutes from the time he pulled under the spout till the time he's pulling out on the road. Can't beat that. Well, what do y'all think of my corn crop? Boy, she looking fine, ain't she? It's a little on the short side, though. Nah, just kidding. This is my sweet corn crop. Uh, you know, we got, I don't know, maybe a quarter acre sweet corn planted here. And, you know, it's, of course, it's notoriously short, even though uh, I would expect it to be a little bit taller than this. But... It's full tasseled. 
and it's trying to pollinate and surprisingly it, it doesn't look too awful drought stressed. That's about the time we probably gonna see some coons roll in here and start uh, picking our corn before we have a chance to get it. I'm really liking this Roundup Ready corn. I mean, look how clean it is. Of course, we put out some pre-emerge on it too. Oh, here's one of the silks. This is already pollinated. Silks probably. This is probably not too far away from being able to be ready to pick and eat. Now, it's still got a good long ways. Looks like this ear pollinated though. See, there's one and two kernels that didn't pollinate, but it looks like the rest of them pollinated. The reason I brought you out here is I was going to show you our field corn and uh, the effects that this drought that we're coming into is having on it. And we're out here, uh, it's almost noon. We're not quite in the heat of the day yet, but we're not too far there. Here's my sweet corn. Here's my field corn. Now right here, we're in a pretty heavily compacted area. Uh, this is where our truck comes in off the road and this is where we park and load stuff. So uh, roots gonna have a hard time really getting down deep in the soil and getting moisture. So this is a pretty good spot for me to show you the uh, effects of drought stress. And you can see this corn is, you know, it's starting to roll its leaves up pretty tight to try and conserve moisture, give it as little leaf area as possible to evaporate moisture just because it can't, uh, just because the roots are not able to pull up enough moisture right now. And, uh, you know, we still got some good ground cover that's shading the soil, keeping the soil temperatures down a little bit, which allows the root plant's roots to be more efficient. Now, I read somewhere that uh, when the soil temperature gets above 90 degrees, the a corn plant's roots just really kind of, they shut down. They, it's, they have a hard time pulling up water and, nu and nutrients. And, well, anytime you can keep a, uh, keep a cover crop on there, keep it shading the soil, it keeps the soil that much cooler, which even when you get in dry conditions like this, it still allows the plant to grow and do what it's supposed to do and helps mitigate you know, any of effects of, of drought stress. But getting on in here, in a way from where we parked the truck, you can tell it doesn't look quite as bad. Uh, corn's still a little short, still wanting to roll its leaves up some. And you see it's already starting to fire up a little, little bit. That's just the plant uh, cannibalizing itself of its lo lower leaves trying to pull nutrients and stuff up into the main part of the stalk where it's going to need it. See, so it, we're already at this point and the corn hadn't even tasseled yet. It's just starting to tassel in some parts of the field. Not looking good for yield. It's going to be tough for corn to recover from this. Now, we do have a 50% chance of rain two days from now on Sunday. God willing, we'll get it because we need it. Cause you look down through there, I mean, it's looking it's looking pretty rough. And if we hadn't been doing what we've done with the cover crops and everything, there's no telling how bad this would really look. You know, for most of the last three weeks, we've had temperatures in the high 90s, approaching 100 degrees. It's been pretty breezy some of those days. I haven't had any rain in those three weeks. I mean, this ground is hard and dry. You know, even, even with cover crops and soil health, I mean, there's a, there's a limit of what the soil can do to take, take care of the plants. If there's no water coming, I mean, the corn plant's not gonna have any water to take up. That's why we really need that rain Sunday. Otherwise, our corn crop is going to go downhill in a hurry. Now looking right here across this little drive, uh, you know, where we don't park the trucks and stuff, you sit and you sell, you know, it's looking, it's looking better. You know, not, not rolling up or not rolling up as bad. You start going up a little rise, soil's a little thinner, rolling up, and then you get up here and it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's looking okay, or it's still looking okay. If we get a rain uh, next couple of days, you know, this corn should be all right. See, for the most part, it's still nice and green down through there, not trying to cannibalize itself yet. And then, oh, look at here, look at what we got. We got some tassels coming out. And as soon as these tassels start emerging, I don't know if you can see that dust or not, but it starts shedding pollen. And the pollen falls from the tassel down here to the silks, which is on the very 
uh, tip end of the emerging ear. And what we really face in drought conditions with corn is that there's not enough water availability for the plant to grow normally and these tassels can go ahead and emerge and start shedding pollen before these silks emerge. Now if no pollen lands on these silks, this ear will not be pollinated and won't produce any kernels of corn. And then on top of that, with the high temperatures we're getting, you know, when you get temperatures in the high 90s, that temperature is actually high enough to sterilize that pollen. So it doesn't matter if it falls or not and hits the silk, if it's sterilized, it's not gonna pollinate. So that's the real risk that we're running with this drought and high temperatures that we're seeing at one of the worst times for the corn crop. Now this right here, you know, this plant will probably be fine. Uh, you know, silks are emerged, pollen is shedding. So as long as the pollen isn't sterilized, this should fertilize normally. But then you get down here where drought stress is more prevalent, you know, we got a tassel right inside that leaf that's gonna be emerging soon. And if it emerges, so there's a tassel. See, if it emerges and starts shedding pollen before the silk down here emerges, you know, we're gonna have a big problem. So we've been in this situation before. We haven't had a disaster on pollinating yet. Not to say that we can't. Hopefully uh, this will be an another year where we come through fine. But only time will tell and there's not a darn thing I can do right now to help my corn crop along. All only thing I can do is pray. Pray the good Lord sends us the rain and sends us the rain soon. Now you look across that hillside over there, you can see some nice lush green patches and then you can kind of see some a little bit lighter, lighter green or bluish or blue blue gray patches where the corn is really twisting up and then other places the soil is a little bit deeper and it's still got enough moisture to grow without showing significant signs of drought stress. Uh oh, uh, first pigweed of the year I've seen on our farms. Let's go ahead and get them. And then uh, out here in the uh, wheat field, I want to show you another problem that we're looking at. All right, you can see little beans coming up right there pretty good and then oh where'd they go to you don't see any coming up and that's because i mean this dirt is powder dry uh, there's one right there that looks like it germinated there's another one looks like it germinated but i don't know if there's enough moisture for it to get up and this stuff was planted when we still had a little bit of moisture left in the soil. Yeah. And then we get to ones like this right here. You know, there's enough moisture that the bean bean squishy. That means it absorbed moisture, but there's not enough moisture for it to germinate. And soybeans are notorious if they sit in the soil too long. So there's another one. Without enough moisture, I mean, even once it does rain, they won't germinate. They do not stay long in the soil at all. I mean, look down there. I mean, there's no moisture. I mean, it's just hard as a brick. Now, the first, first of what we planted is up to a good stand. This was planted when we were about halfway through. The soils were starting to get dry. And then we'll see a lot of parts in the field where, I mean, we got a pretty good stand right through there. And then go a few feet down the row and there's nothing. And there could be patches all across the field where the soil's a little bit thinner, didn't have the moisture, that we might not get a stand out here. And, you know, the only option is to, you know, come back and replant it. But we're quickly getting to the point where it's too late to replant even soybeans out here. Typically, July 4th is around the cutoff date. I've seen some beans planted later, but... You know, you get this late in the season trying to plant soybeans, it's, it's just a, it's a salvage operation. It's not anything where you can expect great yields off of, so. I had to come get an AC because my camera overheated, but, you know, we're at a point with these beans, I don't really know what the right thing is going to be. If we get a rain Sunday, I think we'll be all right and we'll get a good stand out of all of it. However, if we miss that rain, uh, who knows when the next rain is going to be and then we're at a point, do we try and decide, do we go in and spot plant? Do we keep what we got? 
really don't want to start all over from scratch because you know we'll lose the yield potential of the beans that have come up but spot planting and doing a good job of it is extremely difficult to do in fact i mean you're not going to do a good job you're not going to get all the spots you just try to hit as many as you can so yeah i really don't know i, I do know right now there's no decision to be made but it's something that's in the back of my mind you know you know going to have to going to have to put all options on the table here for the ne next couple weeks and then when conditions do change you know we'll have to make a decision then i do know i'm not cleaning my planter up yet even though we're done planting you know i'm not cleaning it up yet until i go ahead and make make this decision so anyway it's going back to the grain bins uh zach should be back here in just a few minutes get them out on load number three for the day I was up there and I was going to zip tie it back down so I can let it down. So you just threw my gun on the ground and broke it? I didn't mean to. Well, you, you threw it on the, you tossed it on the ground. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, no, I didn't. That's just what you said. There's a zip tie right here that can prove to you that it broke. Jeez, Carter, man. I'm surprised you hadn't tore that concrete up yet that you're standing on. Oh, what? Mm. Zip tie didn't prove, prove anything, Carter. Use your head so you don't tear my equipment up. Now I gotta go to town and get a new fitting. <sighs> well, that's gonna be all for today. Uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly Carter and I are gonna take off a little early and head to Chattanooga to see our daughter Paige who moved up there about a year ago. I haven't gotten to see, see her since Christmas and on Kelly and Kelly's seen her since March. So she's moved into a new place up there. So we're gonna take this fir first free weekend that we've had in a while and head up there and, and spend a little time with her. So anyway, we'll be back out here Monday morning with plenty more of hauling, spraying and cleaning. Well, another day, another dollar. Yesterday was actually a really good day. Kind of a boring day, because everything went right, but it was a good day. Hardly any to no line at the river yesterday. I got four loads in, and if I would have pushed the envelope and probably ignored my speedometer, I probably could have got five in. Looking like uh, everybody's about wrapped up in the field in our area so people aren't falling straight out of the field anymore so it looks like we're going to catch a lull until everybody's contracts start coming in next week and then the lines start picking back up again so hopefully we can get four loads a day for the rest of the week that'll get us over half hauled make me feel a little better about getting done with everything including getting the seed wheat hauled up to greenfield before matt and kelly carter have to leave for vacation what a beautiful morning we got out there i got back from uh, chattanooga uh, late yesterday evening. Had, had a great visit with a daughter who we hadn't seen, seen in a while, but anyway, it's back to work today, and man, we've got some beautiful weather. The heat wave of the last two and a half weeks has finally broke. We got temperatures today, mid-high 80s, a little bit of a north, north breeze. It feels absolutely wonderful out here. Unfortunately, though, that rain we were supposed to get yesterday did get a little bit we got anywhere from like a tenth to two tenths of an inch across all of our farms definitely not not what we needed but a lot better than nothing better than what other people got so hopefully with these cooler temperatures that'll be enough to get us by until uh this weekend when we got uh, another chance of predicted rain so i know the cooler temperatures will really help ease the stress on this corn crop but wish we could have gotten more yesterday but well, we don't always get get what we want I fully expect uh, we got, we're going to have to spray uh, plant bugs on cotton the, this week. Uh, just waiting on the phone call from my cotton scout. Should be calling me 
pretty soon, so we gotta finish cleaning the sprayer up. Uh, when Zach got done spraying beans last week, you know, we were spraying Valor and Metribuzin as part of the burn down, the residual, and Valor is real bad about hanging up in your spray tank and your lines and your tips and everything. And it can severely damage cotton if it breaks loose when you're spraying. So you gotta do a real proper clean out on the sprayer. We got some Valent tank cleaner, which uh, neutralizes the Valor. It's been sitting uh, in the tank several days and the boom several days. But last thing we gotta do is we gotta take out all the tips and clean the screens on them, make sure there's no chemical hung up in the, in the tips or anything. So I'm gonna get Carter started on uh, pulling tips off while I go get a new, new pressure washer handle and we'll just wait and see what the Cotton Scout has to say. Zach's back out again hauling grain today, so if we gotta spray cotton, after I get this cleaned out, I'll swap up with him and I'll go to hauling grain while him and Kelly spray cotton. Sorry, I was, uh, I was meeting with my cotton with my cotton picker part, parts man when you hollered. Well, uh, you know how that always works. I call you and you're busy. You call me and I'm busy. It usually takes two or three times. I just I told the guy I was just on the phone with. I said your list was short and I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping you kind of tell me the same thing. Uh, well, your list is short and I need to go. <laughs> So we, we go, we're, still, we, we're still running, uh, I mean, you ain't even running a quarter threshold of plant bugs right now. All right, well, good deal. I, I like news like that. All right, well, I, I got all my chemicals on hand, so I guess I'll just hold on to them until next week. Oh, we can about guarantee yeah. them when they do it next week. I would, I, I would be absolutely shocked if we don't. All right, all right. Well, good deal. Well, I kind of, I kind of like those reports. That's what that, that, those are the reports I pay you for. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how it is. You're gonna get good in, man. I don't follow directions well. <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good. Well, I'll go ahead and pull the sprayer back in, back in the shed, and we'll, I'll plan on getting back out next week. All right. Have a good. One. All right. Thanks. Well, we ain't got spray this week. Surprise! Surprise! So, I reckon I'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the Valor cleaned out of this. I reckon I'll have you uh, spawn hauling and I'm going to get the dual pulled off that other tractor and probably sometime middle of the week or so and before I get you uh, put out some fertilizer on it. But uh, I'll take over hauling for a bit. Load it up back on the. I'm just riding what's wrong today. Everybody got rain done. They were starting to creep in as I was leaving. See what it looks like in an hour when I get back up. All right. Well, there you go, guys. We got some good news. We ain't got to spray for plant bugs this week. Kind of surprising. Normally, it's this time of year we got to start spraying for them. But uh, our, re our reprieve from spraying looks like it's going. It's going to last. It looks like it's going to last another week. But definitely be on the radar to do it next week for sure. park it until next week fill it up with fuel and go over here and check my fuel supply see what it looks like I don't know if you can see that line on the cube right up there it was about halfway between uh, where the cube goes through there and the top before we started planting so we've used about half of our supply of course, the wheat harvest took a big, 
big chunk of that uh, fuel supply. So keep our fingers crossed. Maybe we've got enough to get through the rest of the year. We're not going to be using very much fuel from now until we start fall harvest. You know, all we're running is the sprayer tractor a little bit. So I'm not going to be using a lot of fuel, but of course, come this fall, we'll be going through it quite a bit again. But at today's fuel prices, I think it's somewhere around $5 a gallon for off-road diesel. At least that's what Dylan told me. I hope we got enough to get us to get us through the rest of the year, and then hopefully maybe this winter, fuel prices will calm down some, and we'll be able to load up again for next year anyway. All right, are you just playing in the water now? You're doing a good job. You take that plug in, out of the bottom of the radiator compartment there. There's a black plug in the bottom towards the front of it. You can pull that out and the water drains out of it. The whole front side of that engine, you better change some clothes, put on some rain suit because you got to get down in there with the flexible hose because there's a bunch of oil and stuff in there that really needs to be pressure washed good. All right, about to load them up with load number three for the day. Hate turning the loads quick today. <laughs> 